Well, hello, and a very warm welcome back to the Andrew Eborn Show with me, Andrew Eborn. And I'm delighted that uh, my special guest, my very special guest today, is that dynamic duo, Right Said Fred, Richard and Fred. How are you both? Hey, good morning. Hi, Andrew. We're good, thanks. Yeah. You're looking very dapper. Well, I thought I'd wear the pink. I thought I'd look dapper because you've got your pink shirt on. I, I have got my pink, pink shirt on, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And what, I'm, what I love about these sort of uh, strange days is that we get the hamster wheels working. We live in the heart of London. And you yeah. know that broadband's bound to collapse at some stage. Technology's <laughs> bound to fail. So I thought yeah. we'll, we'll keep going, keep peddling. Um, but what I love, and you guys epitomise, if you like, uh, life BC, as I call it, life before Corona, because you yeah. were the busiest guys in the industry. You tour all over Europe and things like that. And I remember one week um, just before we had this lockdown when we got together on four separate occasions. Yes, um, one was yes. the BMI Awards, where you collected yes. yet another accolade. And we were sat together with the uh, Bee Gees royalty and we did all that sort of right. stuff. Um, we then went along to a, another showbiz thing. I know you love the showbiz things. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, another showbiz yeah. at Soho, if you might remember, we went along to the Ivy Club for a big yes, celebration. We did, yeah. Um, like and probably, uh, one of our favourites was actually having a very peaceful lunch, just the, the uh, four of us, as it turned out, so you, you me, and uh, and uh, wonderful Luigi, uh, yeah. Lavery, a restaurant yeah, called we did. Which is closed now, I think you said. I know, and this is a sign of the times, because every single one of those that I mentioned, and it was just a, a spate of four nights, separate nights that we, we did that, and yeah. every single one of those is closed. BMI Awards obviously happen virtually now. Um, yeah. You know, there's Soho clubs, they're all closed. And yeah. Pastor yeah. Rory, uh, has closed its doors for good. Yes, yeah. um, And That's I was going to ask yeah. you guys, I mean, that, as I say, you would appear to me because you, for the music industry itself, you represent probably some of the busiest working professionals out there. How have you coped? Well, with, 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 with the lockdown. Yeah. Um, well, we, we, we both have had depression um, and we've on, been on meds for, um, well, since about 95, 94? Um, Mid 90s. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think mine tends to be a little bit worse. Or hit, either mine's worse or he copes with it better. We haven't quite <laughs> figured that out. Um, so during the lockdown, what I have to do, which is just me speaking, not, not for both of us, I have to, I have to exercise. I have to remember my, my medications. I have to take magnesium at night. Um, and I have to switch off away from the mainstream endless news of doom and gloom. There are certain tri triggers as, a, um, as someone who's suffered with depression for a long time. I can tell there are certain things I must not do. Social media, I must not go near social media. At any time. Well, <laughs> within about a, two or three hours of going to sleep, if there's something particularly horrible on there about us, it can, I can, there can be 20 nice things, but if there's one horrible thing, that's the one that stays with it's me. It's usually me saying that. It's, it's normally him. <laughs> and, uh, and I have to be very careful. Uh, last week, um, I was with my wife um, and I had a particularly bad meltdown. I haven't, haven't had a really bad anxiety attack for a long time, but I did last week. And I, 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 I lost about an hour. Just, I can't even remember what I did. I, I, drew, I did loads of repetition, I, I kind of just completely lost myself uh, and had a really bad couple of days. My wife was there, she was fantastic. Um, but we, so, so I, I have certain things I must do to keep myself in a happy place. Um, and what, I, what I've noticed is that with my, with my medication, we both, we both take this, that's, that's what we're on. Um, and, um, I have to, I norm, what I was doing up, in, uh, last, up until this started, I was on, I could go down to one tab every three days if I had my regime in place. Now I'm back to one tab every, every day. Um, and I think um, there's, a, I mean, just from a personal level, there's, I, I'm seeing a lot of people with lots of mental health issues who haven't got a history of mental health issues. I think they're discovering um, a, a side of themselves and life that they're not very happy with. Um, so, so personally, that's how that's how I cope. What are your what are your? Um, I I just must do's. My, well, I don't, yeah, I, I agree. I think you do have to avoid trigger trigger moments and trigger trigger informational stuff. Exercise does really really help. Uh, the irony of um, you know opening 
keeping some food outlets open and shutting the gymnasiums was just beyond me completely. That is insane. Yeah. Um, and the gym that we used to go to was probably cleaner now than it's ever been because everybody was, you know, everybody was religious about cleaning everything. So and so, social distancing and so you know, all that everything. stuff, you know. So yeah. it's actually probably safer in the gym than it is, than it is at home, actually. Um, so I just, yeah, so exercising is important. And I, one thing I've, I've um, mentioned to other people who've had trouble with this is just go out for a walk. Yeah. Just get out, go out for a walk. Ignore it in this whole self-isolation thing. You're not allowed to leave the house. If it's, a, if it's a choice between your mental health and therefore possibly your physical health and breaking the, the, the guidelines or whatever they happen to be, break the guidelines and look after yourself. Absolutely. The trouble is, of course, you've got, you've got single mums well, 17 stories up in, 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 in a city. Exactly. What are they meant to do? Well, one of the, yeah. one of the things that's, that's clear from this is that people on lower incomes are more ad, much more <laughs> adversely affected um, by this than people on, on, on good money. Yeah. And if you've got a big house and a nice garden and a supportive wife and great kids, then, then what's the problem with staying at home? Particularly if you work on IT or anything. If you're, if you're a chippy or a plumber or something and you've got your own business, you live you know, you're in, a, in a flat on the 10th floor or so on, on the outskirts of some major conurbation, then with no outside space, this is a major issue. And mm. I, think the, I think the monomania about COVID to the exclusion of everything else is, is one of the greatest, um, I wouldn't say, I don't know it's what you call it a crime, but it's, it's one of the greatest missteps that a government can uh, commit, I think. Because although we're talking about depression and anxiety, these things will inevitably impinge upon physical health. Yeah, do. You know, if, yeah. if you're if you're depressed, you might drink. You might uh, I don't know. You might take drugs. You might. You know, there's all sorts mm. of other. You know, blood pressure. There's also there's also there's a myriad of, of, of. I think eating. Physical eating. You might overeat. Yeah. You know, um, and motivation is extremely difficult. You know, the Bank of England says you know we'll bounce back in two years. Well, my thing is. Yeah. If, we, if for a country to bounce back, the people have got to bounce back. You can't have a country won't bounce back unless the people bounce back. And uh, I think we're doing the government or, or the, the, the powers that be seem to be doing a very good job to me at, at stifling that essential quality, which is the, the quality of getting up and doing things. Yeah, people are now so some people are like this, this is one of those sort of things, and that there's always been. Uh, a stigma, if you like, about mental illness. And uh, yeah, yeah. if you break your leg, you know, people, will, they can see you've broken the leg, they probably sign the cast, they make a joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You talk about mental illness, and it wasn't yeah. until fairly recently that brave people such as yourselves come out and talk about it, those in the public eye. Yes. You know, to shine a spotlight on it. And I, I personally think it's, it's essential. I want us to be the generation that talks about mental illness. Yes. The next generation doesn't suffer the stigma. No. Well, no, well, well it was I agree. A, it's I agree. interesting when the ban first broke, and um, we, 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 Richard's partner was extremely ill, and so managing that professional life and personal life became very difficult. And the record company's approach to that was pull yourself together. That was it. You know. Well, I think it, the there, there, there was no let's talk about this. There was no management. There was no care. It was just shut up, do the work. That, 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 that was their approach. Well, this was sort of reflected back in the day with post-traumatic stress syndrome, wasn't it, with, with soldiers on the battlefield. Um, it took a long time for officials within that area to recognise that shell shock was a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not just, a, you know, the, the consequence of sheer cowardice, you know. Um, and, and I agree with you, Andrew, I think. Um, but Kate Middleton actually is doing some really good work on with mind and, yes. and on, on mental health. Yeah. Um, a much more creative person than uh, some of the other people in the family um, <laughs> that we won't mention. But uh, yeah, so I, it's the, the issue is everybody has different ways of coping with this, and it's it's really really important to 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 understand yourself and don't let it. It's, it's a bit like a the trouble with grief and depression is it's so all encompassing in a way you can't see through the fog when it's really really bad you yeah. can't see through it. And you, I've tried counselling and that didn't, didn't really work. The medication was really, really helpful. Um, and it can be quite dangerous. I, Fred and I were talking about this before. And I, when, we were, um, when I had depression really badly, driving became an issue. Yeah. You know, you find you, you're tempted to drive into the oncoming traffic. You're tempted to yeah. drive off the road. So target fixation. Tar target fixation, they call it. Yeah. So it's, it's potentially very dangerous. Um, and children are experiencing tremendous depression, yeah. robbing children of their 
their, their peer group, if you like, their, their so, socialising skills is a terrible, terrible thing. Mm. Um, we have a friend who... The education, I mean, everybody's is praising and saying how wonderful the teachers are and they suddenly recognise that. But it's not just about the facts and figures and so on and so forth. No, yeah, sure. It is that interaction. It's the playing with your peers, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that the, de the dehumanisation of kids in this last 12 month period is is disgraceful and i know and i know there's the virus i'm not denying the virus i'm just saying we have to um factor in the negative side of lockdowns of um and, and even 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 social distance i mean i understand social distancing because i um i have poor health and so i every winter i social distance i don't i don't want to be in crowds and uh, but at the same time there's another side of life which is which is that interaction it's just the humanization of particularly kids and there's a friend of ours and her, his daughter uh, is at a school which isn't a massive school but um but they've got 12 teen 12 teenagers on suicide watch in one school now that is horrendous i can't i've never heard anything like that before my life. It's just insane. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, we always talk about the health of the nation, the health and the wealth of the nation. Yes, yes. Are inextricably linked. Yes. And, I mean, the great thing about you guys is that you're in the public eye. People listen to what you say. They might misrepresent it, and we'll come on to that in, in a bit. Yeah, they certainly do. It's, have, it's good to have you in your own words. But having people like you being brave enough to talk about your own struggles is really, really important because you came back. I mean, take, let, let me take you all the way back to the 70s. I and mean, you started out playing with the greats. You were playing with Bob Dylan, you did David Bowie, you did all that sort of stuff. And people forget, it's not like an overnight success before no. I'm Too Sexy. You were playing for a long time. You played, what, 1976? You would uh, have people throwing things at you on stage. It was that sort of stuff. You know, we, we stopped letting our parents into the gigs after that. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me about, I mean, starting out, because the, the industry, you sort of flipped it on, on its head a lot and I, I, I love what you guys do about this because you're not selling out as you say the, the one person to fear is the person who can't be bought out Absolutely, that's you, guys, true. you yes. guys don't sell out and so true. <laughs> yeah. what I love going back to those days let's look at the 70s and when um and uh, your, your early days there playing with Dylan playing with Bowie yeah. and so on and so forth talk to me about those days um, well, at, at the time, we, we were on the road, for our first tour was 78, and we were on the road with a New York duo called Suicide. And as part of that tour, we also did shows with Joy Division, and I think a band called The Addicts, and all sorts of different people. Um, and all then we had names, the... isn't it? All Suicide and Addicts and things. Know, yes, right. yes. <laughs> Joy, <laughs> Joy <laughs> Division is the exception. Yeah. Oh, happy days, yeah. happy days. <laughs> Monday, yeah, it's quite. Yeah. Yeah. Although the UK had a lot of problems in the seventies, we all know, you know, there've been uh, um, the, the strikes, the, um, the strikes, and the well, three-day uh, week, three-day week, and very, yeah, very, very difficult times. It was also incredibly creative through this. If you look what the seventies as a decade uh, produced, everything from punk to prog rock to disco, uh, to disco. it was, it was absolutely, yeah, um, electronica, you know, a, a, a amazing decade. And I think what, what we did at the time, we just tried. Tried to make a living. We got lucky, like every band. We, we, when I got the Dylan gig, that was just luck. Richard, Richard working with Bowie was luck. You have to be good. You know, you have to be good at what you do. But luck plays a massive part of that. And and I think, I I think, think it wasn't it your girlfriend at the time who helped you get that gig? Was it? Isn't that yes? What yeah. Yeah. What yeah. happened? We're, we're, my girlfriend at the time was a choreographer. And at the time, every video had dancers. Yes. It was it was illegal <laughs> it was not illegal. to have a dancer. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she was working her butt off, and because I knew her, and she was doing some quite big videos, um, she talked to casting people. They say, "Do you know a guitarist? Do you know a bass player?" And she go, "Yes, I do." So we that was our little bit of luck, uh, and and so through through her, we we uh, we did the stuff with Mick Jagger, Bowie, Dylan. Um, and through that, first of all, working with those people is a good insight because they are just people, however talented they are, they're, they're just regular people. And they were, and particularly Jagger, he was really good fun. Yeah. Um, and um, then it, I think also the, the gigs we did and some of the horrible places we played and the workload is really good training. So when when the band took off and then you, and you have dark days through those periods and, and like now with the lockdown, I think all those uh, that 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 sort of baptism of fire uh, was has actually 
ha has its uses. It, 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 it puts you in good stead. It does, yeah, mm. yeah. Well, with the Bowie thing, I, I, at the time I had a, a ponytail and um, I was sitting, sitting in the corner and he said, uh, do you want the job? So I said, yes, I'd love to, love to have it. He said, you'll, you'll have to, do you mind cutting the ponytail off? So I remember saying, I'll cut anything off to work with you. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, but it was, yes, it was, um, we our, our thing is that, um, I mean, we've taken a knock financially to working independently. Yeah, we have. And we have, but there's no doubt about that. And if we do anything in terms of recording or videos or anything, we have to pay for it. There's no label. Same with, with touring. Um, the, the good thing about that is we can say what we think. There's, we don't have the chairman of some label phoning us up and saying, you know, don't, you don't can't, do that. don't do that, don't say that, you, you know, can you apologise for that and all that we stuff. Aren't, we aren't affiliated. We're not affiliated to anybody. So, and I think, it, the one thing I do think is a shame, and one, uh, what's interesting about, um, for instance, George Michael, he was one of the few pop artists at the time who, met, who made a, a record about the, the war in Iraq. Yes. At the time. Um, and there was a time way back when artists, Bob Dylan and Joan Byers and all that lot, were incredibly vocal about the world they lived in. And it's a shame that pop music is not like that now. It's, it's, it's... And, and there are many people who've made so-called so protest songs. Woody Guthrie's song. I mean, Imagine is a classic protest song. It's always misunderstood. It uh, you have a look at that sort of side. And that's what music, you, you've got uh, an audience and you're using your music to pass on a message as well as having lots of fun doing it. And the great thing about you guys, you, you have that juxtaposition. You have yeah. a lot of fun in what you do. But you also, and people forget, and as I say, they misrepresent it. You also use your influence, if you like, for making comments. You're not bored, because the labels would never let you get away with criminals, for example. <laughs> no, <they wouldn't. laughs> you, you imagine, I mean, it was hard enough trying to get Ad too sexy away, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was, yeah. So, so the first thing that they put all these things right. Yeah. First of all. What I love is the name, right said Fred, Bernard Cribbins. Yep. Um, yes. As reports would have it, you were just about to come on stage. You didn't know what you're going to be called. Um, mm -hmm. And you heard Bernard Cribbin singing Right Said Fred, that classic song, on the yeah. radio. Is that right? Sort, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, it was uh, a friend of ours. Never yeah. let stand in the way of a good story, but I thought, <laughs> <laughs> let's go with yours. Let's go with yours, yeah. Yeah. What, well, yeah. Happened, what happened? What was the truth? Well, Hamels, uh, back back in the day, you had to get your um, gigs listed in Time Out. They had a they had a deadline. We were getting close to the deadline. We didn't have a name for the band. A friend of ours called Katie had just heard um, "Right So Fred" on the radio, but a Cribbins version. And she, and she just she walked down the road, knocked on my door because we used to the Miles Rudge. We always forget the writers, uh, but but Bernard Cribbins. That's right. That's right. Yeah, always uh, remember the writers. It's always important, as you know. It's very important. He lived. I think he lived in. Um, um, Parsons Green. Oh, Parsons yeah, Green. Yeah. Up the road from your Fulham place, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so Katie mentioned the name that said right, said friend. I, I just, we just said, yeah, all right. Put it in the, um, put it in time out, and and that and that was that. You know, we didn't really, we didn't really think about it. To be honest with you. I think the writer also wrote Hole in the Ground. They did absolutely. That's great. No, yeah. I, I, and this is what you had to do. A fantastic way. And this is what we miss now when you're talking about record sleeves and stuff like that. Digital yeah. downloads. You miss out all the myriad of people. Yes, absolutely. Come to make the record work. And this is what I miss about LPs. And you used to have all Great. sorts of information on there and you could find yeah. out. I, I love yeah. absorbing that information. Uh, uh, yeah. Exactly. Well, well, there was a, uh, there's a, there's a um, Steely Dan album. I can't remember which one it is. Yes. The back of the album, they They've actually the did it. All, they? All, all the instruments and the yes, microphone. Yes, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, that's why at the end of our videos, uh, last three videos, we've done a complete um, credit. On, on everyone involved on the record and, uh, and and the video, because without those people, you can't you can't do it. Uh, yeah, I, well, they, well, every failure is an orphan. No, oh, no, absolutely. It's, it's and every success is, is, is down to the village. Yeah. yeah. No, well, quite. Well, I, I always say that uh, if necessity is the mother of invention, then failure is the father of success. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, so, it's like, it sounds like a plug for my book. There you go. The book of failure. In book oh, of failure. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, right. uh, a, rare, a rare unsigned copy. There we go. Can I get, can I get that on Amazon? Oh, you get it everywhere. All good bookshops <laughs> and a few rotten ones as well. <laughs> but but the, 
great thing is, so so we've got the name right. We've got Bernard Cribbins, who you work with later. And I loved that version of Comic Relief because you were so so brilliant on that. I was watching it again <laughs> recently just to revive myself. Uh, and Bernard Cribbins, he was a real character, wasn't he? He was, he was yeah. Very old school. And, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, he, he was lovely. And just if you think of you know, his, his achievements, he... Uh, he was just a really nice bloke to chat with. Just a really nice guy. And when we did Comic Relief, we, we worked with um, Peter Cook. Yeah. And that was that was fascinating. Yeah, he, was he was off his head completely at like 10 in the morning. Yeah. Um, but incredibly funny and really, um, and a, a real one-off, you know. And I, I miss that. I miss the... That quirk. The, the, that quirk. Yeah. In, well, in, it is. It's strange. I mean, you mentioned Peter, and I, I often have Rainbow George on, on the show. Uh, yeah. And he was his uh, friend and neighbour for many, many years. And he... Right. I mean, Peter was a really tortured soul, is the honest yes. answer. Mm, yeah. Um, and so many people who are, have big extrovert characters are tortured souls inside. And you find that with a lot of comedians, uh, yes, Tony yes. Hancock, um, yes. you obviously had uh, uh, Robin Williams, you know, all these yes. sort of people uh, recently. Yes. And, and Peter Cook, who you mentioned, brilliant, yes. brilliant comedically. Yes. But inside, they really struggle. Yes, mm -hmm. I, 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 that's one of the things about lockdown for artists. I think is the is the the rapport that you would normally get from audiences is missing. Yeah. You know, and they can talk about Zoom and they can talk about you know you know remote gigs and all that kind of stuff. It's rubbish because gigging, unless you're a, you know, look like you know Barry Manilow or something, where you can actually, it's a different vibe. But if you're certainly for rock bands where it's a tribal experience, it's, the yeah. audience is part of the event. The idea that you can somehow, you know, turn this into a sort of remote thing is, is absolutely ridiculous, you know. So I, I um, that for, for artists, you mentioned Robin Williams and people like that, for them to, to have gone, have to, unfortunately for him in a way, he died before this, but for people like that, it would, this would have been absolute torture. Oh, I mean, absolutely hell, because you need that fix. And I, I think what happens is, it's, it's you're, you're hiding that identity. It's that classic thing about the comedy and the tragedy. Yeah. And most people, we are the same underneath it all. Whatever celebrity we have, whatever it might be, underneath it all, if you prick me, do I not bleed? If you tickle yeah. me, do I not laugh? Just to alterate yeah. the Shakespeare. But you yeah. work on that sort of principle. And that's why I say going back to that sort of stuff, whenever you have a common enemy, and if we look at the virus, whatever people's views are on it, if you yeah. view that as a common enemy, there is nothing that unites people more than a common enemy. No, no, that, that's that, true. That's, that's true. true. That's exactly right. That's absolutely true. If if we say that, that COVID nineteen is a common enemy, the problem is is that we are being uh, um, invited to fight it by not uniting. We're being invited to fight it by ma masking up, by social distancing, by by closing down all venues, parties, fun, high streets, high streets, everything, all everything that is about community, everything that is about human connection and interaction has has gone. And that, I think, is hugely damaging. Oh, it's, it's tragic. We live in such divided times, whether you're yeah. anti-vax or you're pro-vax or, or, yeah. or you're, let, let's have devolution or you're Brexit or no Brexit. <laughs> we're, we're out, we're shaking it all about. The reality yeah. is it yeah, is yeah. so divisive. We've just had presidential election, obviously, yeah. uh, with Trump and uh, an extraordinary character, a gift for comedians everywhere, Absolutely. more column inches than <laughs> any president in history. Yeah, but absolutely. also people forget that he got more votes than yeah. any sitting president ever. Yeah. So rather than dismiss him, what, what my favorite thing about Joe Biden, it's not a political statement, is Joe Biden is an anagram of be joined. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they missed it, you know. They they yeah. missed that should have been your 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 campaign, your two campaigns. <laughs> that would have right. done. Be joined for Joe Biden's great back unity. The other yeah. thing they should have done is Biden and by Don. By Don. Come on, I can write this stuff, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You should be campaign manager. You should be campaign. I'm, 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 I'm available for hire, as we all are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I agree with you about. I agree with you about Trump. I think the. The, um, I was watching the lawyer on the TV the other day, the lawyer who made the defence for Trump in the impeachment case. Oh, yes. And he was absolutely, Van Deem, I think his name. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. he, 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 he based in Philadelphia. Um, and he was fuming. He was fuming because uh, he was absolutely sick and tired of this division that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He said, what America needs, and I think it's true of Europe too, it needs a, 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 a centre, a centre 
I wouldn't say centre party, that's not the right thing. In a way, the left and right dichotomy thing with politics is out of date now. It's, it's, it's much more than that. Um, but it does, it needs a political voice that makes sense to as many people as possible. And playing to your base, Trump's problem, I think, was playing to his base. Obama's problem was playing to his base. And it's the same with Biden. They need to move beyond their base, I think, uh, to have any real hope of doing, of achieving what they want to achieve, which is Trump. Trump will be back. I mean, I believe you will know about TNN, Trump News Network. He will. Uh, the, the one, the one thing he did get, which, um, which, which I, I do, I do agree with to a certain extent, is this whole idea about fake news. And I teach my children. I know, uh, Fred, you've got a, a daughter, um, a similar sort of thing, similar age as my daughter. And I, I will always tell them, get your news from many different sources. Absolutely. Because the reality is, uh, the truth is between all of them. It is. And it was what Denzel Washington who, who reminded everybody that if you don't read the newspapers, you're uninformed. But if you read the newspapers, you're misinformed. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly true. Yeah. 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 And, and I, that's, I mean, we've, uh, we've, we've been labelled you know, COVID deniers, anti-vax, we, we've never said that. We aren't any of those things. Um, but if you raise the question, if you say, well, it, has this vaccine been fast-tracked? Were the protocols, and you raise an issue, or you question the efficacy of a mask, or is the government approach disproportionate to the problem? If you raise any of those things, the, 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 the nuance is gone. So you're a COVID denier, you're an anti-vaxxer, you hate, you hate Jesus, and <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? They, they just come up with this crazy it's stuff. The born of everybody, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Terrible, right? Said Fred. Ah. They, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was... It's all to do, but it's it's P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum said that if you want to draw a crowd, start a fight. Yes, that's actually yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Exactly, yeah exactly. Is that what he said? Did that, he? That, and even if you didn't, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. And so the way that the media do it's all about sensation. And it goes back to the point you were making at the very beginning, is that it is depressing for people. We're tired. We've had so much division um, yeah. about Brexit, and now we've had division about this, and it's yeah. doom and gloom and so on and so forth. Yeah. And it does accentuate what are mental health issues. And yes, I everybody has mental health. Everybody gets depressed, some to, to greater extent. And I think by looking at different industries and seeing how that works and the effect yeah. on it helps other people. So even one thing that people assume is because you're a celebrity, you're living on these sort of gold plated whatever's you've got, you're, you just eat lark's tongue in aspic for, every, for breakfast, yes. <laughs> women's champagne, the wonderful crystal. The reality yeah. is, that the profession itself has got so many issues, hasn't it? You are a brand. I mean, we, we touched on about uh, I'm Too Sexy at the beginning. It yeah. was rejected by everybody. Yes. Rejected by everybody. You've been working with the good and the great for a number of years. People forget all that. It's, you weren't an overnight success. No. Um, you were working in a gym. Uh, yeah. in, in, in Putney, and, and you uh, it was basically seeing all these models and people pumping themselves up. <laughs> you thought, we'll write something funny. Is that, is that a fair summary? Sort of, yeah. Sort it, of. it was also... It was it was Fred, actually. Yeah, it was a lot to do with... Um, we'd Your been living... Friend. Yeah, my girlfriend at the time. Also, we'd been living These in... girlfriends are very useful, by the way. They're, they're, they're very useful. They're gigs. <laughs> yeah, and expensive, too. Yes. <laughs> I, did, I, I was going out with a model at the time, and she, I won't mention her name, but she was very impressed with herself, that's for sure. And, um, and we'd just come back from New York, and New York, we'd lived there and played there for a while, and it was very hedonistic. It was really all about the look and who you knew, and, and Richard was working at Nell's, which was a very famous club at the time. And so it was sexy, it was about, it was a, an amalgam of, of the people we saw in the gym, the people we saw uh, out at night, and, just, and also, you know, the, super, the rise of the supermodel, that, that term has seemed to have gone now, but yeah. in the late 80s, early 90s, supermodel was, was the term, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, uh, um, um, Tyra Banks and Naomi Campbell and Christy Brinkley and all these other, uh, what's your, um, L, um, L, 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 yeah, beautiful. I mean, I mean, good, go, gorgeous people. And, um, Thanks. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and so, so, so we sort of, yeah, we were just make, making fun of that. Um, and that's how, that's how, that's, and we've done that, you know, we, 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 we do comment. I mean, we don't write, well, so in a way, sexy is a comment. Sexy is a comment. Yeah. Um, and criminals is a comment. Yeah. 
they're both they're both mirrors in a way. Um, sex is more of a fun way of doing it. I think we were getting pretty gloomy about the whole uh, the whole situation when we did criminals. Um, but a lot of we tend to do that, and I think it's very strange that more artists don't um, that they don't reflect. They almost work in a I hate to use the word bubble, but they almost almost work in a bubble where they don't really relate, or what they're writing about isn't related to what to the way they live and the, and the culture they live in. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's odd, I but, think. But also what happens, and this is why uh, the great thing about, um, and, and I say, going back to uh, uh, Trump and so on and so forth, he, he used Twitter in a way that he can make sure that people understood what he was trying to say. Yes. The trouble with artists is they always get, uh, a number of people, uh, a similar sort of thing, but they get misrepresented. So yes. classic songs, which are actually protest songs, such as Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen, yes. protest song. Yeah, exactly. it's about how they forgot about the Vietnam vets. And he got really upset when yes. at the inauguration they took this as, as the anthem. <laughs> right, yeah, right. right. Was yeah. it? Uh, Mar yeah. Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. absolutely fantastic protest song. Uh, you're beautifully well, going yeah. back further. Making Whoopi is an anti marriage song. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, what do you do with Whoopi yeah. Goldberg? No, but it's yeah. <laughs> 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 just, Whoopi Cushion. Be a good documentary. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you're right. But even Green Day, American Idiot, and so on. So this is yes. great. I, and my daughter loves Green Day. I'm talking about fantastic music taste. Um, yeah. The great thing about it is people don't stop and listen to the lyrics. No, so you no. have a fun element to it. But yeah, actually, yeah. the point that you were making was great at the time, wasn't it? Yes, uh, yes, 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 we, we were. So, yeah, and also we, we didn't think it was particularly quirky or, no, we didn't. or odd because uh, we grew up listening to quirky odd music. Quirky odd music, yeah. you know, Captain Beefheart as an example, you know, uh, Tubes, Talking Heads, these, these uh, television, these bands were sort of, you know, Iggy Pop, well, Stooges. Yeah, even highly commercial stuff like T Rex. You listen, yeah. I mean, I was listening to him the other day. The way Mark Bolan used to sing is yeah. extraordinary. Yeah, it's extraordinary. I mean, uh, same with um, Family. Yeah, and Roger Chapman. Roger Chapman. Roger Chapman. Uh, early, early Roxy music. Early Roxy music. You know, mm -hmm. really, <laughs> really, really interesting stuff. And I, you know, so I, 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 I always hark back to that stuff. I always hark back when I'm on the Exide bike listening to music. I, my almost everything I listen to is guitar driven, and it's mostly Americana with 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 some quirky English stuff stuck in there as well. But I, I, it's a shame that the pop industry now has become so a corporate. Corporate, mm. yeah, I think it is. Uh, I, I think and, it's and, and you've managed to escape from that sort of thing, which is great. But but the pressure of being, um, uh, effectively, it was a, as I call it an overnight success. Uh, it was a bit of luck went into it. Another girlfriends as 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 yeah, 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 yeah. you be without girlfriends, eh, Fred? I, didn't know. <laughs> I couldn't but, tell you. But, as we understand it, this particular girlfriend had a uh, well, cassette, you have to explain that to the younger folk, had a cassette yeah. of uh, I'm Too Sexy, and they were given a lift home by a record plugger, and yeah. wanted to tell yeah. the record plugger, put it on, on the car cassette, and like everybody in the music industry, they hated it, and so they yeah. switched it off. But the two girls in the back, they were singing, singing along. Is that the right story? Yeah, right story. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't a girlfriend, it was just a, a, a girl friend not a so girlfriend. So if there a girl who wasn't a girlfriend of yours, like, can we track her? Yeah. <laughs> she, she, wasn't actually, she wasn't actually a girlfriend, no, but, she, but, oh. but we knew her. Uh, she worked in the uh, studio where we, where we had recorded it and she was sitting in this guy's car, put it on. He actually took it off about halfway through or something. And then the two girls sitting in the back started singing, I'm a model, and he went, oh, put it back in, played it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and also yeah. back in the day, when we went to Radio One with with our um, with, with the plugger, he had a relationship with um, Simon Simon Bates. Simon Bates, mm -hmm. yeah. and Simon Bates played the single off the acetate. Yeah, yeah. now you Brilliant. couldn't do you couldn't do yes. that now. Yeah, you There's couldn't do that now, and that was I mean they, they tried to talk about how records and it's a bit of luck and it's a bit of you've got to be in the right place at the right time and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, because you also had a similar sort of situation with uh, somebody from America when they came over, a very famous DJ. Tell us about that. Yeah, he, he was. Um, he ran up. Um, ran. He he hosted a big drive time show, I think, in Atlanta, and um, Sexy was all beginning to chart in America on import, uh, but none of the none of the record labels would touch it. So um, what happened was this guy. There was a, there's a thing up in Manchester, which was like a 
uh, seminar uh, in in a city. I think it was called. That's right. Yeah. Still going on, or would still be going on if the industry allowed it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tony Wilson was up there. Yeah, you? and uh, we, we've been a couple of times. Anyway, this this guy happened to be up happened to be up there, and he heard I'm too sexy at a club or a bar. Went to a record shop the next day. I, I bought the cassette. Which is a funny little tape thing. <laughs> it's about yeah. the size There's of only that. Only one it's artist finished. on it, exactly. Yeah. It's about, yeah. Yeah. It's about yeah. the size of that. That's, it is. that's true. Yeah. And he took it back and started playing it. And um, in America, for people who don't know, certain radio stations are referred to as tastemaker stations, and other stations follow their playlisting. Se he started playing "Sexy." This station was a was a tastemaker station and it started to roll. Other stations started playing sexy and and, and uh, the record companies who were, who, who the, you know, last week said your record's crap, picked up the phone and said, can we release your record? <laughs> and, uh, and, we, and, and we went with uh, Charisma in America, you know, who were pretty small label at, uh, really at the time. Yeah. Um, and so that's how sexy broke, broke in America, but it went top 40 initially on import. Yeah. 